Hey people, it is Friday, July the 28th. It's currently 3.40 in the afternoon and it is a scorchingly hot 31 degrees Celsius, feeling more like 40 degrees Celsius with the Humidex. And today is the third day of a heat warning that has been in effect blanketing the city and much of the province of Ontario. And I think today is the last day of the heat warning. So I thought I would come out and record a video walking from a well-known landmark here at the corner of Gerard and Jarvis being the <laughs> Hooker Harveys as it's jokingly referred to. And I'm going to make my way down to Sugar Beach, which is a man-made beach down near the foot of Lower Jarvis, near Queen's Quay on the shore of Lake Ontario. So being a scorching hot day with a heat warning, I thought, why not head to the beach, even if it is a fake beach? going to try to stay in the shade as much as I can. Just making our way south down Jarvis. The thing about Sugar Beach is though, you can't actually swim. It's just a man-made beach, but there's no access to actually go in the water. So to me, that is not what the beach is all about. I know some people just like to lay on the sand and get a tan, but that's definitely not what I do when I go to the beach, which is very rarely, by the way. To me, going in the water is part of the experience. So I'll be curious to see how many people are just out there sun tanning on the fake beach. And we step out into the sunlight. It's an enormous difference from when you're in the shade. Feels like a 10 degree difference instantly. And I remember on other occasions last year or the year before when I was doing videos in this sort of hot weather my camera would actually overheat and shut off so I'm going to try to avoid having that happen again by staying in the shade as much as I can but up ahead here I see there's a non-shady area that I have no choice but to walk through thanks to this surface parking lot here. Approaching Jarvis and Dundas. This intersection has undergone a tremendous transformation in the last 10 years.
crossing Dundas. So I think what I'll do is instead of continuing along Jarvis for the entire way, I'll take a parallel side street to go south. And then I'll make my way back over to Jarvis again. So I'm just going to head west along Dundas Street East for a block or two and then I'll start heading south again. And of course staying in the shade as much as I can. Ahead is Dalhousie Street. I'll head south along Dalhousie. So I thought this would be a nice shady street to walk south along since it's pretty much lined with tall buildings for the next block or two. This will take me down to Queen. But I can't avoid the sun completely. We need another new tall building to fill up this gap here, just to completely block out the sun at times like these. Shooter Street. There's actually a pretty nice breeze blowing, although it tends to come and go. There's Dalhousie Street Park, just a lovely little 
parquet really. to the sidewalk I guess Up ahead is Queen Street, so I'm just going to cross to the south side where the shade is. Someone doesn't know where they're going. And I took a chance that I could <laughs> make it across. That bus was blocking my view, but I made it. Now we're heading back to Jarvis Street here, along Queen. This way I was able to bypass a stretch of Jarvis with mostly low buildings where I would be out in the exposed sun for most of that stretch. Look at there. unexpected music that's just a fact of life in Toronto people just love to pump loud music at all times in all places <laughs> just get used to it because you cannot avoid it <laughs> all right so I'm Still walking through a kind of low-rise section of Jarvis, but things get a bit more built up, a bit further south.
crossing Richmond Street. Nice and shady here. Up Lombard Street. There's a combination of a nice breeze and some shade here, which is quite delightful. Crossing Adelaide. St. James Park. Get some nice shade up ahead with all these mature trees. I like this southernmost part of Jarvis Street. It's where it comes into the St. Lawrence neighborhood and has a very old historic look to it. King Street. like I have no choice but to cross here. I thought maybe I could walk around, but it doesn't seem to be the safest bet, although someone is doing it. Maybe I will try anyway. This is where the shade is. Whatever I got to do to stay in the shade. Another fact of life in Toronto is constant sidewalk closures due to construction. This is the new St. Lawrence Market North Building, which is getting close to completion.
this project was held up for years because after the original excavation began, they came across some remains of a previous structure and the site was closed down so archaeologists could investigate and that held up the project for about another year or two before things finally got underway again. Once we cross the street, we'll get a better look at the new St. Lawrence Market North building, but there's the original St. Lawrence Market building. Looking great. modern looking but I think it looks fantastic and it will have a green roof all right now we're on lower Jarvis after having crossed Front Street heading south so it's sort of like the last leg of the journey to Sugar Beach Passing by the St. Lawrence Market building. Esplanade. And rush hour traffic is building. Friday rush hours tend to be a bit lighter now than Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Most people choose to work from home on Fridays and also on Mondays, it seems. And some more glorious shade. And also shelter from the rain if there was some. So most of these cars are heading for the Gardner Expressway.
Jarvis Street is basically a traffic funnel to get across downtown from the north to south or vice versa as quickly as possible. Mostly to get on and off of the Gardner Expressway. The GO train is stopped on top of the rail corridor here. Commuter rail. Nice views of the financial district. Well, some of it anyway. And a sliver of the CN Tower. Commuter heaven here, or commuter nightmare, take your pick. I just love the views of the towers jutting above the Gardner Expressway. Some people might see it as ugly. I find it strangely appealing for some reason. There's a large Loblaws grocery store. And there's a neat little retail alcove in here. Walkway, whatever you want to call it. quiet right now. I've come through here a couple of other times where it was bustling with activity, where all the patios were full and there was even live music with a DJ. Maybe later on in the evening, this is that will happen. I guess maybe it's not the right time of day. But it is a neat little area.
This is the East Bayfront section of Queens Key. Rapidly transforming area. See cranes up and down. And eventually I believe the streetcar will be extended along this part of Queens Key as well to serve the Portland's development further to the east. So now we'll head back over to Lower Jarvis again. That little detour took me off the main route a little bit, but I wanted to check that out. And I'm fully exposed in the sun here. But over there you can see Sugar Beach, all those pink umbrellas. Named after the Red Path Sugar Refinery, which you see right, right next door. There's an enormous freighter that takes the sugar or brings it. <laughs> one or the other or both to the refinery and some freighters actually are ocean going vessels that make their way to Toronto through the St. Lawrence Seaway So Toronto is an ocean port of sorts, even though it's quite far inland. It's pretty awe-inspiring how massive these ships are. Now let's find out who the true sun worshippers are. And there's a splash pad up ahead. I guess if you can't go in the water, at least you have the splash pad. To cool off. <laughs> After spending a day at the fake beach. Behold Sugar Beach. And the cool waters of Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario is quite deep, so it stays fairly cool all throughout the summer. Oh, very, 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 very. 
out there. They got the beaches and we're going to do the back. Yeah. Yeah. Motler, you could probably look that ship up online to find out if it's an ocean going freighter or just a Great Lakes freighter. There we have it. I hope you enjoyed the walk in the scorching sun, but mostly staying in the shade from Hooker Harvey's to Sugar Beach. I survived relatively unscathed. <laughs> so leave a comment down below if you enjoyed and be sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also be sure to hit that notification bell that way you won't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal as well as via my merch store. And there's also a super thanks button right down below if you'd like to support the channel that way. And you can also find me on Instagram under K Continuum. And that splash pad looks very tempting right now. But thanks for watching. And be sure to keep checking back because, as always, I will continue.